So, dear students, previous class we have come across a very important matter, insulin production. In the year 1983, in the year 1983, an American company, Eli Lilly, has synthesized two sequences of DNA corresponding to A and B of human insulin. In the year 1983, an American company, Eli Lilly, has synthesized two sequences of DNA corresponding to A and B chain of human insulin. Then they are ligated separately to the coding sequence of beta-galactosidase of lacoperon of PBR322. Then these recombinant plasmids are transferred separately to the host cell. You know already E. coli are frequently used as an host cell. E. coli are frequently used as an host cell. Then the cells are cultured which produces A chain with beta galactosidase, B chain with beta galactosidase. By using cyanogen bromide, beta galactosidase is removed. Finally, A and B chains are linked by the disulfide bond. A and B chain are linked by the disulfide bond to get an functional insulin. So followed by that. So today I plan to introduce gene therapy. Today I plan to introduce gene therapy. Dear students, take care of this gene therapy because it is also very important for the point of examination. You know already gene. Fundamental unit of heredity gene is the fundamental unit of heredity associated with a particular character. Therapy is nothing but an treatment. Gene is the fundamental unit of heredity associated with a particular character. Therapy is nothing but treatment. The technique of the technique of replacing the faulty gene, the technique of Replacing the faulty gene by a normal functional gene is called as gene therapy. Look over the definition. The technique of replacing the faulty gene, the technique of replacing the faulty gene by a functional gene is called as gene therapy. Gene therapy are of two types. Somatic cell gene therapy. Second is reproductive gene therapy. Somatic cell gene therapy. Second is reproductive gene therapy. In somatic cell gene therapy, in somatic cell gene therapy, functional genes are introduced into functional genes are introduced into somatic cell. Look over the name carefully, you will get an idea. In somatic cell gene therapy, functional genes are introduced into the somatic cells. Somatic means vegetative cells such as liver cells, blood cells, lung cells, skin cells, etc. In somatic cell gene therapy, healthy functional genes are introduced into the somatic cells. Somatic cell means vegetative cells. For example, blood cells, liver cells, lung cells, skin cells, etc. And this kind of gene therapy is non-heritable. This kind of gene therapy is non-heritable. That is, corrected genes are not transmitted to the next generation. Corrected genes are not transmitted to the next generation. Look over here. In somatic cell gene therapy, functional genes are introduced into the somatic cells. It includes lung cells, lung cells, liver cells, blood cells, skin cells. This kind of gene therapy is non-heritable. The corrected genes are not transmitted to the next generation. Second is reproductive gene therapy. In reproductive gene therapy, functional genes are introduced into reproductive cells or instead of that you can call it as a germ cells. In second case, 
functional genes are introduced into the germ cells for example sperms and ovum or instead of that you can also utilize spermatogonia and oogonia in reproductive gene therapy functional genes are introduced into the germ cells for example sperms and ovum and this kind of gene therapy is heritable heritable means the corrected genes are transmitted to the next generation or the corrected genes are transmitted to progeny in second case or second type of gene therapy corrected genes are transmitted to the next generation or it is transmitted to progeny now look over the first clinical gene therapy first clinical gene therapy was given first clinical gene therapy was given to a 4 years girl suffering from severe combined immunodeficiency disease first clinical gene therapy was given to a 4 years girl 4 years girl suffering from severe combined immunodeficiency disease severe combined immunodeficiency disease which is caused due to single it is caused due to single defective gene single defective gene or due to deletion of the gene that will code for adenosine d aminase Korea first clinical gene therapy was given to a 4 years girl suffering from severe combined immunodeficiency disease severe combined immunodeficiency disease which is caused due to deletion of single gene or due to single defective gene or due to deletion of the gene that will code for adenosine d aminase adenosine d aminase adenosine d aminase i hope that you are remembered the point any word end with suffix a s e is the name of the enzyme any word end with suffix adenosine d aminase any word end with suffix a s e is the name of the enzyme okay it is caused due to si defective single gene or due to deletion of the gene that will code for adenosine d aminase as a result patient with this disorder is having non functional t lymphocyte patient with this disorder is having non functional t lymphocyte as a result they fail to fight against infection of the pathogens look over here patient with this disorder is having non functional t lymphocyte as a result body will fail to fight against infections of pathogen i hope that you know T lymphocyte is a kind of white blood corpuscles it is a type of wbc they will fight against the infections or they will fight against the pathogens okay now question arises how they are going to treat this disease treatment for s c i d okay treatment for s c i d number 1 bone marrow transplantation first treatment bone marrow transplantation bone marrow transplantation back to pusy first year 
chapter structural organization in animals structural organization in animals where we come across bone is not a solid structure bone is not a solid structure bone is not a solid structure most of the bones have got a central cavity known as marrow cavity or medullary cavity bone is not a solid structure most of the bones have got a central cavity known as marrow cavity or medullary cavity this cavity is filled with marrow marrows are of two types red marrow and yellow marrow red marrow produces rbcs along with few wbcs but yellow marrow contain fat cells Look over here. This matter we have come across in PUC first year chapter structural organization in animals. Bone is not a solid structure. Bone is not a solid structure. Most of the bones have got a central cavity known as marrow cavity or medullary cavity. This cavity is filled with marrow. Marrows are of two types. red marrow and yellow marrow red marrow produces rbcs along with few wbcs but yellow marrow contain fat cells so that times first treatment bone marrow transplantation second is enzyme replacement enzyme replacement therapy enzyme replacement therapy take care of this wording enzyme replacement therapy here functional adenosine deaminase functional adenosine deaminase is given to the patient in the form of injection enzyme replacement therapy in the second technique functional adenosine deaminase adenosine deaminase is given to the patient in the form of injection but by these two technique it is not possible for you to control the disease completely by these two technique it is not possible to treat the disease completely better go for the third one to cover next third technique it is also very important for the point of examination third technique t lymphocyte t lymphocyte you know already it is a kind of wbc t lymphocytes are isolated from the bone marrow of the patient t lymphocyte a kind of wbcs are isolated are extracted from the bone marrow of the patient then it is multiplied in the media outside the body t lymphocyte a kind of wbcs are isolated from the bone marrow of the patient then it is cultured in media function adenosine complementary ada complementary adenosine deaminase is introduced into this cell so look over the point carefully first t lymphocyte a kind of wbcs are extracted from the bone marrow of the patient then it is cultured outside the body then a complementary adenosine deaminase complementary adenosine deaminase is introduced into this cell then this genetically engineered cell is introduced back into the patient t lymphocyte a kind of wbcs are isolated from the bone marrow of the patient then they are cultured outside in the media then 
complementary adenosine deaminase is introduced into this cell then this genetically engineered cell is introduced back into the patient but you know already wbcs have very short life span same over here also a genetically engineered genetically engineered t lymphocyte have very short life span very short life span they will survive only for few hours as a result a continuous infusion is required a continuous infusion is required to overcome this problem you have to introduce complementary adenosine deaminase in the bone marrow of the embryo to achieve a permanent treatment we have to introduce complementary adenosine deaminase into the bone marrow of the embryo ill en martare t lymphocyte anta one tarada wbc galu ivuna bone marrow the patient inda horagade tagidbittu adanna belustare ಅದಾದಮೇಲೆ ಒಂದು ಕಾಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಕಾಪಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಅಡಿನೋಸೈನ್ ಡಿ ಅಮೈನೈಸ್ ಈ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಕಾಪಿ ಏನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇದ್ರ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಟಿ ಲಿಂಫೋಸೈಟ್ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಮಾಡಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಆ ಟಿ ಲಿಂಫೋಸೈಟನ್ನು ಏನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಹಾಕ್ತಾರೆ ಆದರೆ ಇಲ್ಲೊಂದು ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇದೆ ಏನಂದರೆ ಟಿ ಲಿಂಫೋಸೈಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ಗಳು ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ತಾಸುಗಳು ಮಾತ್ರ ಬದುಕಿರ್ತವೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನೀವು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಅವಾಯ್ಡ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಒಂದು ಸಣ್ಣ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕನ್ನು ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ಗಳು ಕಂಡು ಹಿಡಿದಾರೆ ಏನಂದರೆ ಡಿಸೀಸನ್ನು ಎಂಬ್ರಿಯಾನಿಕ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜಲ್ಲೇ ಗುರುತು ಹಿಡಿಬೇಕು ಯಾವಾಗ ಮಗು ತಾಯಿಯ ಗರ್ಭಕೋಶದಲ್ಲಿರುತ್ತೋ ಅವಾಗೇ ಆ ಡಿಸೀಸನ್ನು ಗುರುತು ಹಿಡಿಬಿಟ್ಟು ಈ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಅಡಿನೋಸಿನ್ ಡಿ ಅಮೈನೈಸನ್ನು ಏನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಬೋನ್ ಮ್ಯಾರೋ ಏನಿರುತ್ತೆ ಪಾಪುವಿನ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಅವಾಗೇ ಅದನ್ನು ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಮುಂದೆ ಅದು ಬೆಳೀತಾ ಇದ್ದಂಗೆ ಡಿಫೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಜೀನುಗಳು ರೀಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಗಿ ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಆ ಮಗು ಹೆಲ್ದಿಯಾಗಿ ಹುಡ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥದ್ದು ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಜೀನ್ ಥೆರಪಿ ಸೊ ನೋ ಲುಕ್ ಓಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಡಯಾಗ್ನೋಸಿಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಡಯಾಗ್ನೋಸಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ನೆಸೆಸರಿ In addition to that, you have to know pathophysiology. So, dear students, <clears throat> for effective treatment of the disease, early diagnosis is necessary. In addition to that, you have to know pathophysiology, altered physiology of the host. Pathophysiology means altered physiology. physiology of the host earlier the diseases are detected or identified by serum and urine analysis earlier diseases are detected or identified by serum and urine analysis by this method it is not possible for you to identify the diseases in the initial period therefore now modern technologies like recombinant dna technologies modern techniques like recombinant dna technology polymerase chain reaction enzyme linked immuno sorbent assay tests are used to identify the diseases in the initial period modern techniques like recombinant dna technology polymerase chain reaction enzyme linked immunosorbent assay test are used to identify the diseases in the initial period so these modern techniques are used to study genetic diseases or genetic disorders they are used to identify genetic disorders hiv in a suspected aids patient it helps to identify presence of hiv in a suspected aids patient and detection of mutated gene in the cancer 
patients. These modern techniques are used to identify genetic disorders. Already we have come across in principles of inheritance and variation. Presence of HIV in a suspected AIDS patient to detect muted gene in the cancer patients. To detect muted gene in the cancer patient. I hope that you know serum. It is plasma plasma minus fibrino serum is nothing but plasma minus fibrinogen plasma is the fluid part of the blood fibrinogen will play a significant role in the clotting of the blood plasma is the fluid part of the blood whereas fibrinogen will play a significant role in the clotting of the blood based on that it is clear that serum will lack clotting power it will lack clotting power so generally presence of pathogen presence of pathogen is suspected when it has produced symptoms generally the process of presence of pathogen is detected when it has exposed symptom but at that time already the concentration of the pathogen is severe to overcome this problem, the disease is identified by the amplification of their nucleic acid by polymerase chain reaction. So, generally, the presence of pathogen is suspected when it has produced symptoms. Presence of pathogen is suspected when it has produced symptom but at that time the concentration of pathogen is very heavy but by amplification of nucleic acid it is possible for you to identify the diseases in the initial period now question arises how they are going to identify the diseases in the molecular levels before that, I would like to introduce ELISA. I hope that you know it is used to identify the presence of HIV in a suspected AIDS patient. It is based on antigen antibody principle. Antigen, it is based on antigen antibody it is based on the principle of antigen and antibody. You know, antigen is a glycoprotein. Protein which is associated with glycogen are called as glycoprotein. Generally, the disease is identified either by the presence of antigen or antibodies which are produced against specific antigen. Look over here. The disease is identified either by the presence of antigen or the antibodies which are produced against specific antigens. Enzyme linked immunosorbent assay test. It is based on the principle of antigen and antibody. The disease is identified either by the presence of antigen or the antibodies which are produced against the specific antigens. Okay. Now one more technology is there that I will discuss. Now look over, 
the important point of this molecular diagnosis. A single standard DNA or RNA, a single standard DNA or RNA is a tagged with specific radioactive probes. A single standard DNA or RNA is a tagged with specific radioactive probes. They are also nothing but DNA or RNA, single standard DNA or RNA. Single standard DNA or RNA is tagged with specific radioactive probe. Probe is nothing but single standard DNA or RNA. Then it is allowed to hybridize to its complementary in a clone of cells. Look over and this matter is a little bit complicated. Single standard DNA or RNA is a tagged with specific radioactive probes. Single standard DNA or RNA is a tagged with specific radioactive probe. Then it is allowed to hybridize to its complementary in a clone of cell. Then it is allowed to hybridize to its complementary in a clone of cells. Followed by that, it is detected by using auto radiography. It is nothing but on one way similar to that of X-ray. Okay, X-ray. Generally, muted gene will not appear in the photographic films. Muted gene will not appear in the photographic films because as such we don't have the probe that will bind to muted gene. Look over, I will repeat the matter once again. Single standard DNA or RNA is tagged with specific radioactive probe. Followed by that, it is allowed to it is allowed to hybridize to its complementary in a clone of cells. Followed by that, it is detected by using auto radiography. Generally, muted gene will not appear in the photographic films because, as such, we don't have the probe that will bind to muted gene. We don't have the probe that will bind to muted gene. Elaine Martarandre, single standard DNA atava RNA. Radioactive probe galana add martare. E radioactive probe under kuda DNA atava RNA dange rate. Adu kuda single stand irate. Idi and marate a lidanta sequence galana copy mark on birthday. Adat lane martive now auto radiography under on the film irate, x ray tara a photography and a takotare. Muted idanta gene gulu photographic film ali kanala. Yak kana landre na matra probes ko lila modified ki bind akta kanta probes ko lila to muted adanta genes ko lge bind bind akta kanta probes ko lo ali na magi lila haga ki muted adanta genes ko lo photographic film ali nimge kana lila so that ends molecular diagnosis. look over dear students transgenic animal so when you go through this previous paper even the question has appeared from this matter also look over the name carefully you will get an idea transgenic animal an animal with transgene are called as transgenic animal an animal 
with the transgene are called as transgenic animal this is a simple definition no doubt it will carry mark now move to second standard definition an animal with a genome an animal with a genome that has been altered an animal with a genome that has been altered due to inclusion of the foreign dna is called as transgenic animal an animal with a genome that has been altered due to inclusion of the foreign dna is called as transgenic animal you know already genome total number of genes total number of genes located in a haploid set of chromosome is called as genome total number of genes located in a haploid set of chromosome is called as genome okay so two definitions i covered so few examples are there for the transgenic animals including mice 95% rats mice or rats rabbits cow fish etc okay few examples for the transgenic animals are mice or mouse or rat rabbits cows fish etc now question arises what is the benefit of this transgenic animals or what is the use of this transgenic animal this transgenic animals will help the scientist to study the functions of gene how the gene will perform function that already we have come across in molecular basis of inheritance structural genes operator gene promoter gene regulator gene repressor gene inducer gene so dear students back to molecular basis of inheritance where we come across the functions of various genes like structural genes operator gene promoter gene regulator gene repressor gene and inducer genes it helps to study the functions of gene and gene regulation how the genes will control the activity that matter also i come across in molecular basis of inheritance switch on and switch off under lac operon switch on and switch off process it helps to study how the genes will play a role in the development of diseases it helps to study how the genes will play a role in the development of diseases even it helps to identify the treatment for the diseases investigate the new treatment for the diseases like cancer cystic fibrosis arthritis alzheimer's disease etc so second point it helps to study how the gene will play a role in the development of diseases it is also used to investigate new treatment for the diseases investigate new treatment for the diseases including cancer cystic fibrosis arthritis alzheimer's disease etc right next is biological products many therapeutic proteins are produced by using transgenic animals many biological product or therapeutic proteins are produced by using this transgenic animals which helps in the treatment of diseases look over here the third point many biological products or therapeutic proteins are produced by using this transgenic animals that helps in the treatment of diseases for example alpha 1 antitrypsin alpha 1 antitrypsin is used for the treatment of emphysema alpha 1 antitrypsin is used for the treatment of 
emphysema a respiratory disorder that you have come across in pus first year chapter respiration many biological products are therapeutic proteins are produced by using transgenic animal that helps in the treatment of diseases one such an example is alpha 1 anti trypsin which is used for the treatment of emphysema a respiratory disorder in the year 1997 in the year 1997 first transgenic cow rosy is produced first transgenic cow rosy is produced with human lacto albumin genes look over here in the year 1997 first transgenic cow rosy is produced with human lacto albumin genes the protein which is produced by the or the milk which is produced by the rosy contain human lacto albumin that is 2.4 grams per liter the korea in the year 1997 first transgenic cow rosy is produced with human lacto albumin genes the milk which is produced by the rosy contain 2.4 grams of human lacto albumin per liter and it is considered to be one of the most balanced nutritional food for the babies when comparing with even natural cow's milk i will repeat the matter in the year 1997 first transgenic cow rosy is produced with human lacto albumin genes the milk which is produced by the rosy contain 2.4 grams of human lacto albumin per liter and it is considered to be one of the balanced nutritionally balanced food for human babies when comparing with natural cow's milk so that ends third benefit of this transgenic animal now look over two more are there now look over two more benefits of this transgenic animal so fourth one is vaccine safety they are used to study the safety of vaccines this transgenic animals are used to study safety of the vaccines so for example polio vaccine i hope that you know polio vaccine So generally when the scientists are satisfied on the transgenic animal then it is given to the monkeys closely related to human beings followed by that it is introduced to human beings one more toxicity so generally first you have to make the transgenic animal more sensitive to toxic substances when comparing with non transgenic animal first how to make the animal more sensitive to toxic substances when it is placed on or when it is introduced on the toxic substances it will show fast result as a result you can bring the product to the market early okay so toxicity first you have to make the transgenic animal more sensitive by introducing the gene when comparing with non transgenic animal followed by that when it is introduced on the toxic substances this transgenic animal will show fast result when comparing with non transgenic animals non transgenic animals